Welcome back to the channel. That's got answers for all of your questions. You guys ready for this one? So over here, we got a DD series engine. Doesn't matter what you got, seven to 17, we got you covered. Today we're working on a fuel leak. We got a fuel leak at the rail and it's coming from this uh, high pressure feed line from the pump to the rail, not the fuel line itself, but it's coming from the rail. It is cracked right here. Now, if you've seen my other videos on how to replace these injector feed line, uh, the actual injector feed lines themselves, how to replace these seals or the lines, then you know exactly what to do here because there's only a couple extra steps, like removing the sensor, getting this out of the way, removing these fuel lines, get rid of that banjo bolt, and you could just take that fuel line right off, that fuel rail right off. So it's not that bad of a job. But in case you need a little walkthrough, we're gonna go ahead and set you up today. So now remember, these rails could just crack at any time due to the vibration of the engine. So, I mean, they're pretty sturdy, and we don't really have a lot of issues with them. Uh, sometimes they do crack when people change out the lines and they don't torque them correctly and they over tighten them and they crack at the welds or maybe some corrosion got in there due to water in your fuel tanks and it's not sealing correctly and it'll start leaking around here. Uh, there's, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, but first things first, I'm going to go ahead and leave the bumper on, just work around it. I'm going to go ahead and take off this air filter housing cover, which is just four bolts and they're size eight millimeter. Go ahead, take that out of the way. All right, here we go. First things first. Get my eight millimeter on this guy. Beautiful. Look at all that trash flying out. All right, that's what we're looking at. So next step is go ahead and remove these connectors, these Canon plug connectors. All right, just twist counterclockwise. Then we're gonna go ahead and get a special tool for these. All right, you can use this or a screwdriver or a pair of dikes or a needle nose and just get up in there. This works out pretty good. I believe I got this on Amazon. Shoot, everything's on Amazon. Now we're just gonna work all the way down. We're gonna take out this sensor, which is just a push in clip. You pull for your intake manifold temp sensor. So. Go ahead and remove all these clips, remove that sensor, and then we'll go from there. All right, so as you can see, the harness is out of the way. Next step is, I'm gonna remove these high pressure fuel lines. Let's see if I could set it up for you. So, the only thing we're gonna need there is a 10 millimeter head for the socket for head for these uh, bolts here, and then a three quarter wrench to take off those from there and the fuel pump. So go ahead and get those out of the way. So sometimes these guys are so tight that you might need a backup wrench or this fancy tool right here that any uh, tool truck sells. I forget what it's called, like a backup wrench thingamabobber. Yeah. And it makes it so much easier. Save so much time with that thing. you're going the right way, otherwise you're wasting time. Remember these fuel lines are a one-time use, so you're gonna replace them regardless, so it doesn't matter what happens to them. And if that lower sensor is in your way, just go ahead and take it off. It's not a big deal. Now, one thing I do want to note is time is money. So we better hurry our asses up on this job. I don't think it pays this job right here. I don't think it pays more than like 2.5 hours. So let's get to work. And here's another trick for you. If you don't have enough muscle to take off these lines, well, then it's time to start working out. Oh, there's there. Go ahead and take this off because it's going to be in the way. The only bolt we need. 
need to save is this one right here. The other ones we can get rid of. Cool. Next step. I'm going to go ahead and remove, loosen up all these fuel lines here. Boom, boom. All six of them. All the way up. And then we can go ahead and remove that banjo. So right here we're looking at the banjo bolt on the back of the fuel rail. This is actually the uh, return line for the unused fuel. And it takes a 60 to get up on there. So we're going to go ahead and put that on there. Right? Go ahead and loosen that up. And then uh, we don't need those washer seals anymore because, I mean, really they're one-time use. So we're going to replace those as well. So we're going to remove that then we're gonna loosen up all these fuel lines and take that off and then we can go ahead and remove the rail so we'll get back to that in a minute all right so i'll do a couple of them right here and the rest we'll just kind of fast forward to make it easy oh actually so i'm using this little fancy guy right here i got it from matco you can get it on amazon ebay any of the tool uh, dealers themselves so it's an actual six point fuel line socket so i use a thinner version of this one for number six because number six is hard to get to so i use a chrome and it's a thin wall version let's start right here let's see what we're doing and remember if it wants to fight you rule of thumb is get a bigger hammer show it who's boss right take these fuel lines and just throw them on the floor it don't matter when in doubt hammer out I think I've heard that somewhere. Look at those fingertips, man. Those suckers work quick, don't they? They make someone happy, at least. And then, of course, a uh, three-quarter stubby wrench works best for this. Get your finger in there. Got to work those fingers. And then for all the bolts that hold the uh, injector feed line seals in, they're all 10 millimeter head. And I use a magnetic version of a 10 millimeter head just so they don't fall through the intake manifold there. And of course, you're gonna make a mess regardless. There's gonna be fuel draining out of the rail, whatever's left in there. No doubt after this, you're gonna have to prime the system if you wanna do it right. Otherwise, Full can of ether straight ahead. Damn, come on, fingertips. Make me look like a punk. A little punk on video. We'll get there. Damn, look at that. See? That's all there is to it. So, what I like to do is keep them in order of where they came out of just so i know they're already made it to that injector and it's just easier to go back in that way so i always line them up i always don't necessarily mark them but just put them in order when you take them out but that's all there is to it so i'm going to fast forward through all the other ones so, all right got to that banjo bolt in the back Next step is take off all these bolts. Well, actually, you don't need to right now. We're gonna go ahead and take off that rail. Let's just make it easy. Got my 10, gotta go in the right way. That's a positive. on there keep it in order so it goes back in the right place In case you forget the orientation, they do have an arrow on them to face up. So number one, 
It's a little bit different. See, it's got a sensor in the way of that bolt. So we're gonna go ahead and take out that sensor and then we can get to that, uh, that strap there. If I can get the camera at a good angle for you, maybe not. used to spit on there and it would get stripped out in the intake manifold so often well more often than none and it was such a pain you'd have to re-thread this stupid manifold yeah it's a little broken that's why it's hard to get under there So back at it, get that sensor out of there. Make sure you clean it up before you put it back in. See how carboned up it gets, I'll sit it up. Once that rail's out of the way, next part, take off these seals, same 10, 10 millimeter head, and just clean up the sealing area. Don't lose the screws. Grab them on with your middle. Yeah, I lost it. Go ahead and just grab them. Boom. Just like that. Clean up ceiling area, do it all six. So remember all those seals, one time use. Anytime you take them out from those uh, feed lines, you gotta replace them. Otherwise, they just won't sit right. All right, clean up all these little ceiling areas. And then we're ready for the magic the fuel rail, whenever it shows up. So here we are looking at all the parts. We got all your seals, all your injective feed lines. We got your rail. So when you get a new fuel rail, that's what it comes like. All shiny and new, like a fat ass flute or something. If I knew how to play, I'd make so much money, I wouldn't be here. All right, so we are back with the rail. Uh, it only goes on one way. The Pressure relief valve or pressure limiting valve is in the back, and the uh, fuel pressure, fuel rail pressure sensor is in the front. I line it up into place. These guys are sticking straight up. Let's see if you can see that in the video, kind of, maybe, a little blurry. There we go, looking good. I will get these bad boys on, and I am going to keep them loose. That way I can get all the fuel lines on. I mean, you can put the, the seals on first, or you can put the rail on. It doesn't really matter. I like to just get this on and in the, in the spot it needs to be. All right, make sure all those arrows are pointing up, otherwise you're wasting your time. Cool, so I'm gonna screw them down a little bit. Not all the way, just so I can actually flex this thing and get all these lines on. All right, we'll be right back. So, with that fuel rail kit, I get all new seals as well, so you don't have to order those separately. It's kind of nice. If I can find my socket, we can get started. There we go. All right, all right. So one thing I do want to mention on these seals is there is a little spot right here that says top. Make sure that this is facing up on there. 
you know, I never really knew what's different about it. I don't see anything. But you know what, if there's an arrow, if there's uh, something, you know, a uh, signature telling me it needs to go which way, um, I'm gonna listen. I don't know why they do what they do, but I'm gonna listen. They're a lot smarter than I am. I'm the one just fixing their screw ups. Alright, so I'm going to start all these. I'm not going to tighten them down yet. Alright, so now all the seals are on. I can go ahead and get my fuel lines on. I'll go ahead and just start them. So I, I know they're in the right spot on the injector and then on the rail in case this has to move at all. As soon as I know it's good, at a good spot, I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything down here. So I'm going to get a couple on just to make sure we're good. And the reason I'm starting in the middle here is just so you guys can see it easier and I don't have to adjust the camera so much until one of you guys comes and works for me full time. Still waiting on that now. Ride wrench. That was a wrench. Where would I be? Yeah. Wrench came up and walked away. Which you hear what happens? All right. So it's kind of hard to start by hand. So I went ahead and just got this little stubby wrench, right? And three quarters. Just gonna go ahead and get it started. All right. So I know the rail's in a good spot right there. I know my banjo bolt is gonna be lined up. I know my banjo bolt's gonna be lined up right back here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna torque all these bad boys down. All right, so it's the six bolts. All right, all those are torqued down, so we're good there. So I do got to mention this. Everything has a torque spec and everything should be torqued down for a reason. You don't want anything backing off. These might've been broken because they weren't torqued properly. Who knows? It could have been. That or the vibrations. That or poor design. Any reason. But whether it's the fuel injected feed lines or the fuel rail feed lines, these little stupid bolts right here, everything's got a little torque spec. You may not see me doing it just because I need to speed through the video. I know you guys don't want to watch out. 45 minute video on how to put some seals on. Got to make it more interesting for you. I'll keep my shirt on, don't worry. So, here's a little trick I learned. With number six, it's a little difficult because when you get this banjo bolt on there, you're not able to get a socket on there. So, what I do is I get a socket on there and tighten down this first nut for the injector feed line seal and I leave the second one loose. That way I'm still able to pivot the seal if I need to and get the fuel line on there. Now that is one of those trade secrets that I'm giving to you right now. Not too many people know about that. Keep in mind, if it's not sitting on there right, if it's not sitting on there right, then it will leak. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. So what I do, I leave this seal loose, get the fuel injector feed line on there, torque it down, and then torque the seal down. That way I know the seal is sitting on the feed line itself. That way there's no issues whatsoever. So that's what we're gonna do with all six right now. All right, so I got the seal, at least number six done. I'm gonna go ahead and get this banjo bolt into place. So I got brand new washer seals. Probably can't even see what I'm doing. Wiggle it around, give it some force. Bit on it beforehand. All right. Take my 60. Get it up in there. Ah, there we go. And go ahead and torque that bad boy down. All right, grab my torque. All right, so everything's down, everything's torqued. All we gotta do now is put on the harnesses, get the sensor back in there, connect that little sucker. Get the injector feed line to uh, the high pressure fuel pump from the from the pump to the rail, and then uh, we'll be good to prime the sucker. All right, we got our fuel line here. We put on this uh, isolate, not isolate, but dampener, I guess you would call it. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. You can see what I'm doing. Probably not. Big old shiny heads in the way. But damn, it's a sexy looking head, isn't it? All right, got started on the fuel pump. 
just throw it on the rail. I want to get it tight, get this in place, screw that down, <clears throat> screw that down, and then tighten these bad boys up. Freaking squeaking like I'm in puberty or something. I don't know what's going on. That's a hell of a day. Go back through and torque that when I'm done. Same with these right here. I gotta double check on that torque spark. I think it's like 38 foot pounds. I don't want to get that wrong. I don't want to give you guys the wrong information there. All right, same thing. Get that fuel line going. Get it going on the opposite way. A little slap and tickle over here. All right, so sometimes the fuel pump itself on the top of the element where this screws down onto will be extremely rusty due to the, the, the water in the fuel, the water in the diesel, corroding the top of it. So sometimes you'd have to just kind of scrub it up real good to get it to fit. Otherwise, I think it's gonna leak on you. All right, get that place started. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's no music in the background right now. That is hard to do. Work with no music? Freaking YouTube always cutting out my audio, though, every time I got music going on. All right, so that's good. So I'm stuck right here. I'm going to go ahead and torque everything down. And then continue my harness excursion. Uh, so after that, the only thing left that I got here is the sensor, which is done, and the filter cover. After that's done, I can prime the system using this right here. Make sure that's full of fuel. And then just go ahead and pump this like 200 times. Um, it might still be a little hesitant to start, but it should catch on you. That or whole can of ether, which is never recommended, but I didn't hear anything. All right, so all that is put back together. We are all good there, that's back on. And I do want to point something out to you. Just in case anybody thought that that was a good idea. So, you can use this uh, method right here, just pump it like 150, 200 times, or use a fuel primer, uh, fuel primer machine, which is what I have. It makes things a lot easier. You don't have to worry about pumping that thing, wearing out your hands. You got other things to do. Other than that, you should be good. So, realistically, that wasn't so bad, was it? Uh, warranty, maybe, maybe three hours, no more than that. So you better use your time wisely because as you can see it can be a little time consuming just uh screwing on those injector feed line uh tubes they can be kind of a pain sometimes you just got to be careful not to cross thread them but once you know they're on there good just turn your ass up come on come on come on come on but it ain't that bad um this whole job start to finish it probably took me an hour and a half just because of camera angles and stupid things like that just turning this thing on and off is kind of hard to do but i want you guys to know you guys got to know how this is done and maybe if you guys have any issues down the road say you're driving you spotlight low fuel leak or something you go to check it out and all of a sudden hey you know what i've been busted enough has got a little video on that sure as hell i do so you know what you're welcome hey you guys got any questions let me know stay hustling stay grinding out there you know what? Make that money.